Hello, my friends. Welcome to Guide of Egypt online course, Learning Ancient Egyptian Language. This is, will be lecture three. I know it took a long time to record this lecture. Honestly, I finished uh, this lecture a long time ago. I prepared the lecture almost one year ago, but I was super busy with tours in the last uh, eight or 10 months. That's why, excuse me, I didn't have uh, free time to record the lecture. But now I do. That's why here I am uh, recording the lecture. Which seems something strange. My computer crashed twice while uh, recording this lecture. But I believe this one is going to be okay. So let's start. I'm using different technique now. I am uh, sharing my screen with um, the video. Okay. Here we are. Okay. This is the slideshow. Uh, I believe after watching this lecture, your understanding about the Egyptian language is going to be better. And I believe you will be able to read a few uh, sentences uh, written on the walls of the temples or the tombs. Uh, my last request was to uh, do this homework, exercise two. I hope you did it well, but let's together try to find uh, an answer, uh, some answers for the, uh, or solutions for this exercise. The first sentence is, Weben Ra M Achet, rises Ra in the horizon. Weapon. So this is the first, the answer of the first question. Translate. We, uh, I wrote the uh, the transliteration with the red color. Weapon. Ra. M. Achet. And then the meaning in the uh, turquoise color rises. Ra in the horizon. And I add extra. Uh, line which is the grammar. What is the type of the word in the grammar uh, level or the grammar uh, position? So weapon is going to be verb, is a verb. Ra is a noun. M or N is preposition. Horizon, what we call it noun after preposition. Um, and in regular blue, the final meaning, Ra rises in the horizon. And you will find that I put the word there between brackets because it is not a part of the, uh, the sentence. We figure out this by logic or by sense to make uh, the sentence uh, more uh, or understandable for English speakers. Okay, but in the Egyptian language, it, it doesn't exist, this word there. Yes, they had there in other cases, but the one here was out there. That's why we put it between brackets. So any word between brackets, it means uh, we add it because logic uh, needed this. Okay, but it's not part of the, the word or the sentence itself. I also have something different, the word webin or the verb webin, I read it webin, webin. I'm using my local uh, understanding because we do have this word webin means to appear, something hidden or someone hidden and uh, appeared, webin. So we shall read it this way, webin ra em achet. The second one, second sentence, which is critical. <laughs> um, most of the women are not going to like this. If we explain it in the famous way, which I disagree with, it says, Jed es gerset. Jed es gerset. Jed is verb, es noun, ger 
verb set now speaks man silent woman when a man speaks the woman is silent you see we put when a uh, between brackets and the uh, between brackets and a uh, verb to be between brackets man speaks woman silent when a man speaks the woman is silent so we could figure out the meaning in a different way it's not necessarily when the man starts speaking the woman is going to stop talking it could be also uh, the woman will stop talking and the man will start speaking it will be the way around so it's not a matter of disrespect or humiliation no it's a matter of giving a chance to uh, to speak each one in row okay the third khid sesh m debit er newt ten khid sesh m debit er newt ten khid verb sesh noun m n a preposition debit noun after preposition R or R preposition also, newt noun after preposition, and ten pronoun, ten pronoun. The scribe fares downstream in a boat to this town. The scribe fares downstream in a boat to this town. And the same case like wibin and wiban also khid i can call it khad and because it is similar to an uh, arabic word khad okay which gives the meaning that someone is going into water not necessarily fears or uh, sails but it could but it it is connected with an act happening in water khad sesh m debit er newt ten sedjem s sedjem sesh ben en betah sedjem sesh ben en betah again sedjem sesh ben en betah sedjem verb sesh noun ben pronoun in preposition betah noun after preposition this scribe ben sesh ben this scribe listens to betah this is the typical verbial sentence iyura embet hena iyah iyura embet hena iyah or ayu as i say it now aywa is not a you anymore it is aywa means indeed truly yes aywa ra embet embet aywa ra embet hena iyah the sun is in the sky together with the moon which is it's a fact so when we put a you which i call it aywa it, it makes sense aywa means yes or an acceptance or uh, a word means indeed Yes, indeed, the sun is in the sky together with the moon. But in uh, hieroglyphic books, they call it copula. Aywa, this is how you put the grammar title for it, copula. Ra noun, uh, in or m preposition, pet noun after preposition, hena preposition again, and yah noun after preposition. This is also uh, a typical nominal sentence. You can see there is no verb. And uh, to translate it to English, we had to imagine verb to be and we put it between brackets. But the ancient Egyptian sentence has no verb. This one, I'm talking about this one, nominal sentence. Because the previous one had a verb. And it, the beginning is a verb. We will talk about this. 
ሰድ ጀም ነጀስ ቤን ሬን ሰድ ጀም ነጀስ ቤን ሬን ዲስ ቡር ማን ሂርስ ዘ ኔም ዲስ ቡር ማን ሂርስ ዘ ኔም አይ ሶር አይ ሜድ አ ሚስቴክ ሂር ባይ አዲንግ ቱ ብራኬትስ አራውንድ ዲስ ቢኮዝ ዲስ ኤክዚስት ኤክዚስት ሂር ኢን ዘ ሴንቴንስ ቤን i think uh, the word man we can see the symbol man here but the whole word means poor but we call it poor man because they show the shape of a man so this poor man hears the name uh, another typical uh, verbial sentence starts with verb verb comes first not like english subject comes first now here verb come first so sejim is verb nejis noun as subject ben is pronoun and ren is noun comes as object aywa ki es ember ben aywa ki es ember ben yes another man is in this house another man is in this house so they say aywa copula key adjective is noun m preposition per noun after preposition ben pronoun now we come to lesson 3 we talk about we already know that there are samples with one sound samples with two sounds and samples with three sounds and samples with four sounds it's just one sample but it has two sounds like the lake with the lotus flower sha with the papyrus plant ha another shape called a means great sha ha a we can write sha with a and ha with a and a with a we can this is to the writing itself is correct the symbols but transliteration is wrong i know sha itself has a at the end but when we add a it doesn't mean extra a so we don't write it sha no it is still sha but we make sure or the uh, ancient egyptian were trying to make sure you read it sha you understand that the last letter still a the same for ha the same for a so to add extra a to the transliteration is wrong also one of the strange things that sometimes they add extra letter, letter at the beginning like the bird itself in the middle is ba without the first symbol without the third symbol number 2 in the middle is ba but no problem to add b and to add a and still called ba the same for ha we can add ha which is h with dot underneath ha like muhammad muhammad so this is ha not h and to add also a at the end the only exception is a it is always always the the main symbol in the beginning we didn't find in any uh word in any temple or any tomb that they wrote ain before or the symbol number one is the uh, uh the uh, the first uh, sound or the, uh, the the letter was one sound ain so it comes this way all the time okay but we can still read it this way this is the original way okay but those are extra ways uh, and we found 
many like this, okay? But still give the same pronunciation and the same meaning. Now we come to the personal pronouns. We have three personal pronouns, suffix pronouns, dependent pronouns, and independent pronouns. Let's learn about the suffix pronouns first. The suffix pronouns, we have singular and plural, and it is for males and females, except uh, some we will explain it now. So when I say I, it means I. They call it E in uh, hieroglyphic books. They pronounce this symbol as E. I pronounce it I. I means I. I am I. Okay. And you, ik. But in you, we have masculine and feminine. You for males, you, ik. Okay. You for a female, tis. Or te. Okay. Or tu, or ti. So it could be tis or ti. Also for he, f. For she, s. I, ek, t, f, s. I, ek, t, f, s. And then plural, we have we, n, u, ten, u for plural, they, sen. And we can see ten can be written with this shape of t or c or the regular t. And they, sen, L is written with this type of S or this type of S. Both are pronounced sin. Did you realize something that when we write the transliteration for the suffix pronouns, we must add dot before the letter. There is always a dot before the letter. So when I write I, I must put dot before. Ek, dot before. So this will... Um, say that this is the suffix pronoun when I put the transliteration. So, uh, not adding this dot, it means a mistake. So remember, when you do the next homework, not to forget adding the dot before the transliteration of the suffix pronoun. So remember when I said I was a good student of hieroglyphics because I was good student of Arabic language and the Arabic grammar. So in Arabic grammar and in ancient Egyptian language grammar, we have also uh, dual uh, pronouns. So we have personal pronouns and plural, singular and plural and dual. So for two people, they say ni, tini, sini. We, ni, you, Tini, they, they for two. I'm talking about two people only. When we say we as two people, ni, you for two people, tini, they for two people, sini. Okay? But it is not commonly used, okay? Because you don't find two people in most of the cases, either uh, singulars or plurals. How we use the suffix pronouns? The first use as genitive after nouns. Any noun followed by uh, a suffix, it is a possessive or a genitive formula. Newt if his city, bear s her house. If I put s, newt s will be her city. Bear if his house. So we, we can do the same, our city, our house, their city, their house, their school, uh, your house, his house, my school, my, my city, Newt E or Newt I, my city. The second use after prepositions. It comes after prepositions. Hina'i or Hina'i, 
with me into to you after prepositions okay and again don't forget that we add dot to the suffix pronoun in uh, transliteration number three it comes as subject but it has certain conditions in verbial sentence of course and after eu in nominal sentences so let's have an example of a verbial sentence it says chem es ki sicher chem es ki sicher she doesn't know another plan she doesn't know another plan but the ancient egyptian didn't say she doesn't know they say doesn't know she another plan as uh, an arabic speaker i understand that way easily doesn't know she another plan but as english speaker or western language speaker we must say she doesn't know another plan eu f ember eu f ember he is in the house or aywa he is in the house eu f ember it could be eu s ember eu ek ember aywa you are in the house okay this is nominal sentence there is no verb because is here is imaginary verb or logic verb verb to be but in arabic language and in ancient egyptian language we don't use verb to be this way okay. we have it but it is not used commonly it is always hidden we understand from logic it is there like when i say i am muhammad in arabic we don't say i am muhammad we say i muhammad but i i understand that there is verb to be hidden but we don't say it okay. i muhammad so aywa f ember aywa s ember aywa ek ember and again don't forget to uh, i here made a mistake i didn't put the dot before s okay so learn from my mistakes and don't do the same now we come to uh, a unique pronoun it is not also uh, widely used it's called reflexive pronoun myself or yourself just how we use just it is the same meaning but because sometimes we read this as s and the symbol and sometimes we can replace it with the symbol which means also s jed s or jess jess jed f n f this is supposed to be the shape of the sentence when i say he speaks to him he speaks to him or he speaks to himself okay he speaks to him but him the second one which one is him him the same person or another person that's why we use the word himself okay but if we follow the exact meaning of the first one it says he speaks to him not to himself but to say he speaks to himself we'd say jed f n jes f this is himself now jed f n jes f so this is the proper way to say he speaks to himself ren e jes e we can use it also as my own not necessarily to be himself or herself or myself it can be also my own so ren e jes e my own name this is how we can use the reflexive pronoun jes now we come to a, a quite different um style in the egyptian grammar called m of predication how m will be before the predicate so we can understand what they wanted to say in this sentence as an example aywa f m sesh okay f m sesh yes he is as a scribe so m of predication it tells me that he is not 
at this actual thing. He doesn't have this title or he is not uh, an actual scribe. He is not an actual doctor. He is not an actual minister. He has the title of owner only. Okay? Like when you have uh, owner uh, PhD uh, from a university or from uh, a certain academy. Okay? So he is as a scribe. So he is not a real scribe, but he is treated as a scribe. He is welcomed as a scribe. Now we come to the verbial sentence, Sejim F. Sejim F is the shape of the uh, uh, verbial sentence in ancient Egypt in the uh, simple present, in the simple present, verb and subject, verb and subject. He listens or he hears. Okay, because we have another type of sentence, sejim to f, and also before to we add dot, because we have to as a different word, but here to doesn't have a meaning, but it gives or it changes the meaning of the regular sejim f formula. So now it doesn't mean he hears. No, it means he is heard, like passive and active. So, Sejim F, he hears. Sejim 2 F, he is heard. Okay, and let's share another. Okay, so um, the ancient Egyptians were aware with all the types of sentences, like here, we have, we can say, Sejim N, we hear, Sejim 2N, we are here. Active, we hear. Passive, we add to with dot. And it, be, it will be passive. Sejim 10, you hear as plural. Sejim 210, you are heard. Sejim sen, they hear. Sejim 2 sen, they are heard. Okay? So we know that the, the main example of... Uh, the verbial ancient Egyptian sentence in the uh, present sample is Sejim F. Okay? Now we come to the vocabulary. Ma'a See, verb to see, but I call it ma. -a. Okay, if you, here is how to say it, ma. -a. Ma. -a. Because we still use this word in our uh, modern time. When I say ma, -a, his eyes, it means he was looking carefully. He was like doing a sharp look, deep look. Ma. -a. Not ma. -a. It is ma. -a. Verb to see, ma. -a. Okay, ja, cross, fresh, to be happy, be glad, rejoice, hab, sent, sa, son, sat, daughter, and we, I hope you still remember that when we add t to the end of the word, it will be feminine. So the masculine word doesn't end with t. The feminine word ends with T. Eat, father. And eat here we have a very special case. Eat, 
is four symbols i t f and the symbol man but we don't pronounce f it's say eat only or it it means father what does make us believe this according to the coptic language uh, it says it not it if so we understand that if is silent i think uh, if here, which is supposed to be the viper snake, I don't think it is the viper anymore. I think it is the semen animal, this microscopical size creature, which is uh, uh, the source for it is the man, the semen of the, the men. So I think the ancient Egyptian made this symbol uh, not as letter F, but as this symbol. Uh, of the uh, manhood. So it is it, not, or it, not it. If. Back or back means servant, male servant, packet, female servant. What means road or way, and we have a very famous knitter called Web Wawat. Wawat, this is the plural of what. The opener of the roads, Wip Wawat. We have Kha, office or hole, and the uh, the holes in the temples with pillars also can be called Kha. Kat, work, hard work, construction. Sati, vizier means minister, high official. A, donkey. Seshta, secret. Seshta, secret. Itiru, river. Itiru, river. Mesah, crocodile. Mesah, crocodile. R or er, mouth. Er, mouth. Her, face. Her, upon. And can be facing also. M could be in or with. And we explained. Uh, M before. Im means there. So I want you to translate, transliterate, and translate lesson three. Uh, you will find that the PDF of this lecture available on my Facebook group, Guide of Egypt. And you can send it uh, to my email, uh, G O E course at gmail.com goe course at gmail.com i hope you enjoyed this lecture and we are finishing uh, we are um, i'm going to do lecture four as soon as possible have a great day and bye bye Don't forget to send me the answers on my email address, goecourse at gmail.com. Bye-bye.